is not uncommon. That's just a larger scale project. And if you want to ride the L train, I can give you a few uh, tips as far as uh, which ones to ride, where to go, neighborhoods to check out, places to see. Uh, we'll chat after the tour. As I said, I'll hang out and answer questions for you. All right, here it is on the right. The third biggest building in the world. It's the Merchandise Mart. Check it out. Built in 1931, designed by Graham Anderson Probst and White, the man who paid for it, Marshall Field. Now, um, it's the Art Deco style, uh, the limestone. Strong verticality, has the elegant setbacks on top, giving it that step-like appearance. Uh, those setbacks were actually part of the zoning laws in Chicago back in the day. You had to have those to allow sunlight and ventilation into the building. Again, geometric in shape. These structures are described as being machine-made. Facing the building there. Those are some of Chicago's big shot merchandisers. Names like Marshall Field are up there. Montgomery Ward, uh, Huntington Hartford, Julius Rosenwald, Frank Woolworth, just to name a few. Uh, Letterman calls those the Chicago Pez dispensers. Nice Carver yacht to our right. What's going on, you guys? Looking fresh. Feeling good. <laughs> That's a rated G version of the boating culture. Those guys are just chilling. If you want a nice photograph of the third biggest building in the world, look no further than over your right hand shoulder. Shazam, Kapow, there it is. The building sits on five acres of land. It used to have its own zip code, and there are eight miles of hallways in the Merchandise Mart. When it opened in 1931, there were 500 showrooms, and it was home to 14 different wholesalers. Uh, built into the otherwise Art Deco style is that Chicago style. Notice the decorative base and the decorative cornice. Also, Art Deco features a number of, a number of historical accents. Neo-Egyptianism, it's called. See the pyramids on top of the Merchandise Mart? Those pyramids do pay tribute to the pyramids at Giza. I'll point out other historical accents as we see more Art Deco. Alrighty, welcome to Wolf Point. You'll notice this is where the branches of the river all collide. Now we know DuSable lived by Michigan Avenue back in 1779, but in the 1830s, when Chicago was becoming a town, becoming a city, this was the social, political uh, hub, if you will, of the downtown area. The first hotels were built here, a lot of the first residences, the first inns and taverns. Uh, there's actually quite a few of them built in this area. Now as we continue here onto the North Branch, you'll notice the Metro trains running to our left. That'll become relevant upon our return as we head to the South Branch regarding buildings that are built over the railroad, but we'll get to that later on. Now I want to bring you all straight ahead of the vessel. You'll see an old brick building. There are boats in the water. Hello. The oldest building that I'll show you on the tour dates back to 1898. It's called the Fulton House by Frank B. Abbott. A former cold storage warehouse. It used to have 14 foot thick walls and those walls were stuffed with frozen cork and frozen horsehair. Now, when they did the renovation in the 80s into apartments, it took a whole year to thaw that material, and they removed 500 truckloads of it. Now, the man who did the renovation, Harry Weiss, who you'll recall loves to say, he did the uh, triangular shape Swiss hotel. Nautical themes here are everywhere. We got boats in the water, again, pretty rare. Uh, there are only three in this marina. Starfish on the facade of the building, and on top, those round windows are reminiscent of portholes. There's a variety of windows you find on a ship. Units here range from 920 square feet all the way to 2,600 square feet. Really cool place to live. Now, also to the forward left, folks, also by Harry Weiss. We got the triangular shapes, style windows, very cool. 1988, the Chicago Maximum sunlight, exposed steel framing, balconies, staircases, very cool. There's four units here. They are four and five stories tall, respectively. Each one features its own boat bath, its own elevator, and its own parking space. Uh, so popular are these units, it is said that the original purchasers of them back in 1988 still do own them today. Very large structure on the right, goes back to the 70s, called the East Bank Club. Built by Ezra Gordon and Jack Levine. Now the East Bank Club essentially is a high-end fitness facility. It's so high-end, the slogan here, it's where the jet sets go. Uh, President Barack Obama used to work out here, first lady Michelle Obama, Oprah, even used to work out here. That's a little more old school, obviously. If you want to keep it more new school, we see professional athletes here and celebrities all the time, uh, guys like Simeon Rice. Uh, and we used to play basketball, uh, basketball here quite often before three agencies sent him to the Denver Nuggets, thus crushing my soul forever. Uh, former Chicago Bull, Matthew Nate Robinson. Yeah, Nate Robinson. Mm. Very good ball. We miss you, Nate. And I thank you. Now this building predates the zoning laws in Chicago that require developers to have a promenade or a green space if you are building on the <laughs> Chicago River. 
So they brought to the wrist and installed the seawall, they added the promenade, the walkway, they installed all the landscaping that you see, and they even added all the windows on this side of the building. So if you eliminate these things from your view, what you'll notice is you're looking at the back end of the building. Uh, this is indicative of a time when architects did not care about what their buildings looked like on the Chicago River, because the river was not much to be enjoyed as it was today. Very nice photograph off the left-hand side of the bus. Look at the kayaks, look at the pontoon, look at the bridges. It's a neat photo. Chicago is very photogenic, as I'm sure you realize. It's seemingly so from the water. So. I'll do my best to point out some really neat photo ops. Uh, if you want to go kayaking, uh, water riders, with one of water riders. They launched from actually just around the bend up yonder. Charlie, County, good guys, water riders. They don't pay me to say that. Okay. They're just cool. Uh, to that point, if you want to do a yacht charter, if you want to buy a fractional yacht, if you want to rent a boat, I will speak with you. Now, kind of the antithesis of these bank club that, you know, again, turned its back on the Chicago River. A nice example of these zoning laws in action here to the right. The beautiful Kinsey Park development from 2001, designed by Papa George and Hames. You can get a high-rise or a mid-rise unit here. But along the water's edge, you'll find 70, 704 story townhomes. They're designed to look like European row houses, as you can see, very beautiful. They've all got a pal uh, patio, a balcony, and a rooftop terrace. Now, besides the beauty here, one of the more remarkable things about this development was the financial backing. Uh, before they even broke ground on this project, every single townhome, all 70 of them, had been purchased. They went for $1.2 million. And that's cheap. They now go for three times that amount. Get yours today. Uh, you may have discovered also in your travels that uh, Chicago is a grid system. We're traveling inbound now at an angle. So once we actually pass the Kinsey Street Bridge here, have your cameras ready for what I call maximum skyscraper exposure. You'll get dozens of buildings in the picture due to our angle of uh, entry, I guess. Uh, you'll get buildings in here that are from 1912 all the way to present day. So you can really capture that stark contrast with all new. Before we get there, though, let's talk about this bridge suspended, kind of frozen in time, right? It dates back to 1848. It's the first railroad to ever come to Chicago, the Galena Chicago Railroad. It used to run the length of the main branch, servicing what was like the new Burdocks and the old Great Warehouse. It used to go all the way up here. Uh, and that'll become relevant to folks upon our return. And I tell you about a structure called Lake Point Tower. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. 